Back in 2011, ESPN in Texas launched the Longhorn Network, a controversial 24-7 cable network dedicated exclusively to the University of Texas. The Longhorn Network has been made fun of for years. But today, I wanted to explain why the Longhorn Network is a little bit more controversial than meets the eye. It's not the fact that why would anyone need the Longhorn Network besides Texas fans. It's the fact that it actually led to the demise of the Pac-12 potentially becoming a super conference and could have prevented Texas. Texas and Oklahoma leaving for the SEC, but the main one it could have led to is the ending of the Big 12. But let's start by going back to the year 2010. Larry Scott was the commissioner of the Pac-10 at the time, and he wanted to start a super conference before super conferences were even conceived as an idea. And his plan was to get Texas, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Texas A&M, Texas Tech, and Colorado all to join the Pac and create the Pac-16. And Larry Scott was able to get all of these schools to commit, but the final holdup was Texas. And the reason why is before all of this, Texas actually had a backup plan where they were trying to conceive their own network, which would end up becoming the Longhorn Network. And they had an offer from Fox, but it was ESPN that came through and decided they wanted to exclusively have the Longhorn Network be a part of ESPN. And this would create a first of its kind standalone network for $300 million for 20 years to have their own specific designated designated channel that ran 24 hours. Now this was unprecedented. We had never seen anything like this before. The only other thing we had seen close to this was a designated conference channel like the Big Ten Network. We had never seen anything devoted just to one specific school, but it wasn't supposed to be one specific school. At first, Texas wanted to partner with Texas A&M, their longtime rival, to create the Lone Star Network dedicated to both Texas and Texas A&M. A&M declined because they wanted an equal share rather than a smaller cut compared to Texas. So obviously not accepting this really changed a lot of college football history. And you can't really blame Texas for accepting ESPN's offer uh, to create their own network. How could you turn down a dedicated channel to your school for $300 million for 20 years and they were the first school to be offered something like this? And at the time, again, conference networks were not a thing. The Pac-10 wanted to start their own conference network, which is why they wanted to reach out to more schools and create a bigger league because they wanted to replicate something like the Big Ten Network that had started in 2007. And at this time, the SEC network had not existed and would not exist until 2014. So Texas decided to back out of the Pac-16 deal and decided to stay in the Big 12 and accept ESPN's offer to create the Longhorn Network. And the Pac at that time, Larry Scott scrambled and was only able to snag Utah and Colorado instead of A&M and Missouri. So that created the Pac-12 and then A&M and Missouri left for the SEC and Nebraska left for the Big 10. And what's crazy is this was supposed to end the Big 12 at the time because a lot of the schools were not happy that Texas was getting so much attention, specifically Texas A&M, which led to them and many other schools leaving, and the Big 12 back in 2010 was left with a lot of questions rather than answers. So it's crazy to look back at how history could have changed. I mean, the Big 12 could be the conference that no longer existed, and the Pac-12, which would have been the Pac-16, would have been a mega conference, and, and those right now would have been the Big 3 conferences. And that's why the Longhorn Network has such a trickle-down effect, because with its creation, it completely changed how college sports are now, and it definitely would have changed the Big Ten and SEC expansions that we have seen as of recently. But back to 2011, the Longhorn Network first aired on August 29th of 2011, and it was not available in a lot of places at first, and this upset a lot of Texas fans because they were trying to find football games that were only on the Longhorn Network, and it was not available in a lot of places. It eventually expanded to different networks, and DirecTV and Dish had it. It was available by 2016 in 20 million homes, I remember myself having it, even though it never made sense why I in Ohio would have this, and I never really watched it. Why would I have interest in Texas athletics? I'm sure many of you thought that as well, but during its run, the Longhorn Network broadcasts all Texas athletics, whether it was volleyball, football, basketball, and the Longhorn Network dried up pretty quickly when it came to programming. At one point, if I'm not mistaken, they had a live uh, Bevo cam at some point, and the Longhorn Network has just kind of existed, but in the summer of 2021, when Texas announced they were moving to the SEC along with Oklahoma. Uh, athletic Director Chris Del Conte said that the Longhorn Network was actually going to end and they would join the SEC Network, which ESPN had also created back in 2014. Yes, the Longhorn Network existed before the SEC Network. Tell me how that makes sense. Uh, it doesn't, but it did. That's what happened. So yeah, that is the Longhorn Network for you guys. Again, its history is complicated. It has a massive butterfly effect that changed the landscape of how college athletics were run. Again, ESPN offered a 
lot of money to uh, promote this network. Again, it was Texas's idea at first, actually went to Fox first, but ESPN gave them such a big offer that any school that was in that position would have accepted something like that. And there's a reason why we really haven't seen something like that again. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.